you post this for me, please? Oh, you've hurt your hand, Mr. Johnston. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a graze. I'll get you a plaster if you want. No, no. Uh, the receipt for the pass will be fine. Thanks. Please! You've taken my necklace. What are you talking about? Don't try that one, Auntie. I'm not stupid. I know that you have it. You can't stand the fact that Granny left that necklace to me and not you. We both know that necklace should be mine. But it doesn't mean I'd stoop to steal it. Now, I suggest you go back to your room and have a good look for it. You always were a careless child, Fiona. Could you prepare my bill, please? I'm checking out. Sorry. You should look where you're going. Would you like to report the theft of your necklace? Uh, what's the point? I know who's stolen it. Do you need a hand, Claire? I can manage, thanks. Stand by, team. We have a case. So, team, you want to get into the Academy of Criminal Investigation while I have a serious crime for you to solve. Could you please introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Dom. I'm from Edinburgh, and I think I'd be a good detective because I keep an open mind and I'm super intelligent. Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm from Edinburgh, and I think I'd make a good detective because I'm optimistic and fun. Hi, I'm Alistair. I'm from Irvine, and I think I'd make a good detective because I'm cool, calm and collected. Well, you certainly sound like the right kind of people we're looking for. I'll tell you what I know. Look over here. Fiona Ross is staying at the hotel because it was her grandmother's funeral yesterday. Now, her grandmother, in her will, left her a very expensive necklace, which unfortunately has been stolen from her bedroom, bedroom two, on the first floor. Heather Stewart is her auntie, and Heather proclaims that the necklace should have been left to her. Now, Heather also told me uh, that she wanted to order a taxi to take her into Kilcrumman Town at 8.30 this morning. There are very few other guests staying at the hotel. Ian Johnson, who's a double glazing salesman, he's staying on the same floor of the missing necklace on room three. Now, you should check him out. And the fourth and final suspect today is Claire Henderson. She's a chambermaid at the hotel. Now, she has a master key card and she was cleaning the first floor corridor when the necklace was apparently stolen. Now, between you and me, she's not very good with money and even as a manager, I had to uh, say no to a sub on her wages a couple of days ago. That's what I know about the suspects. Let's hear it from themselves. I started on the first floor bedroom corridors at about half eight. Miss Ross told me I could do her room because she was going out, so I did it first. And I remember seeing an old jewellery case on her dressing table while I was dusting. I might have moved it slightly, but I didn't look inside. I do remember that our bathroom window was left open, though. After Miss Ross's room, I did Mr Johnson's. He was in there working, but he said I could just clean around him. After his room, I did that in Mrs Stewart's room. I was finished the whole bedroom corridor by about 20 to 10. I didn't go back in there after that. I ordered a taxi to take me into Kilcraman this morning at 8.30. As I was leaving, I saw my niece coming out of the dining room. We didn't speak. I went into Kilcramond and visited the lawyer who was dealing with my mother's estate. I informed him that I was planning to contest the will and to expect to hear from my solicitor. I then went shopping and took another taxi back to the hotel. I was in my room for 11 o'clock. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Fiona made this whole theft up to stop me contesting the will and getting the necklace. I went down for breakfast at about 8. Ian Johnson came in soon afterwards. I met him in the lounge last night, so I invited him to join me. We left the dining room at about half past. My Aunt Heather passed us in the lobby, but I just ignored her. Heather's furious that Granny didn't leave the necklace to her, but she didn't deserve it. After breakfast, I went upstairs to my room to get my hiking gear. I had a quick look at the necklace. It was definitely in its case on the dressing table when I left. I went for a hike and got back to the hotel just after 11. I noticed straight away that the necklace case had been moved. I opened it and the necklace was gone. I went for breakfast at about 8 o'clock. 
uh, Fiona Ross invited me to join her. And after breakfast, I nipped down to reception to check they had a postal facility for the guests. Then I went back up to my room to, to work. I had a load of calls to make. I worked for a couple of hours, then I went downstairs to hand a package into reception for posting. Well, that was about 11 o'clock. While I was down there, Fiona arrived and said that a necklace had been taken. Now, I left because I could see there was going to be a big scene with her aunt. It's none of my business, but Fiona was quite upset in the lounge last night about some argument it had over her grandmother's will. So you should be building up a picture of the suspects by now. We're looking for motive and means and opportunity. After what you've just seen, who do you think has the strongest motive so far? Um, the auntie, Heather, because if she wanted the necklace, then she had a motive to take it if she thought that she deserved it better. The maid certainly was able to take it because she had the master key, so she could, and she said she moved it. So. So the maid, Claire Henderson, had good opportunity to steal the necklace while she was cleaning. The team think that Heather Stewart has the strongest motive as she expected to inherit the necklace herself. But what about Heather's accusation that Fiona Ross has faked the theft in order to prevent her from contesting the will? OK, well, those are great leads. I'd like to introduce you now to the timeline and the incident board. This is your suspect timeline. This is where you should be plotting uh, the times of where and when the suspects were during the crime. And over here, this is invaluable. This is where you write down all your interesting information that you think may help solve the crime. If you could update those, please. Right. So at 8, 8 a.m. Um, Ian met in the lounge. With? With? Um, I'm not sure. Didn't get that. Anything happened at 8.15? No, at 8.15, I don't think. No, I didn't get as late as the team have picked up some good clues so far, but not all of them. It's taken, wasn't it? She realised uh, just after 11. Fiona realised that necklaces sto the necklace was stolen. Yeah. We have a CCTV footage. Mm, thank you very much. Team, gather round. We've got our first piece of physical evidence that's come through this is CCTV footage which is taken from the hotel above. Now this is very important as it could tell us whether or not our suspects were telling the truth about where they were during the crime. Now you have to be very quick when you watch this because we can't detain our suspects for too long. So be decisive. I have to go back up to the hotel to search for more criminal evidence. At, at 8.35, Fiona was coming downstairs. She looked. Well, she was wearing a white jacket and she was waving a key. Well, 9.42, the maid was cleaning the first floor. The 10.55, uh, Heather Stewart came up the stairs and the, she was talking to the maid. Heather? Yep, the auntie. Stairs, he got that. Talking to who? The maid. Right. That was at 10.55. 10.55. Uh -huh. The maid gave the auntie, well, Heather, something. I don't know what it was. Master key. 10.58, they meet again, and Heather passes back whatever she gave to the maid earlier. 11.04, Ian's going down the stairs. He's walking quite... Take these to the forensics lab, please. Yeah, Thank no, you. Yeah. Team, gather round. Would you mind summarising what you've summed up so far? Please? Well, there's been a lot of happenings, um, but there's a few key points. Like, um, at about 10.55, um, Mid was cleaning, um, and Heather, the auntie, came up. She took off a key off, something off her. We, we suspect it's the master key. A, cu a couple of minutes later, uh, she returned with the... Well, what we think is the key, and she gave it to the maid. Well, we don't really know, because she could have lost her own key, but then she would have said that in the statement. Yeah. If she'd lost her own key, she would have mentioned that. Okay. So it is quite suspicious that that happened. The CCTV footage has turned up an interesting lead. 
If the team are right, and Claire did lend her master key card to Heather Stewart whilst Fiona was out hiking, then Heather had motive, opportunity and means. Now come with me up to the forensics lab. I think I found a few things that might help you with your crime. Fingerprints, footprints, clothes and hair fibres are all left behind by a culprit when they commit a crime. And we call this trace evidence. And this is where we try to find it. When I was in Fiona's room, I noticed that the door was not broken into, but the bathroom window was open. So whoever came into the room, they either used a card or they climbed in through the open window. I've brought up the missing necklace case as well. If you can dust that down for fingerprints. I found some large particles of mud in the corner of the room by the door. Now, they might have come from these boots, but I'm not sure. That's for you to find. And also, I found some big splodges of mud in the bathroom as well. And there's the photographs to prove it. My scientists are going to test that mud. So, get busy. Right. There goes. I'm going to dust this for fingerprints with the magnetic powder. I'm going to examine this mud and see if it comes from the stores of these boots. Guys, I can see two prints so far, and I'm just dusting them down. Guys, these uh, footprints say that the person's been round the back of the cupboard, so what? could have maybe had something in there. I think the mark might be from this, these boots because the, the mark here seems to fit in perfectly with the pattern on the sole of the boot. Guys, I'm just lifting this print. I'm going to put it onto the comparator. So there. Right, it's got it's a double got, look. Yeah, it's got a double look. I'll write that. Double look. Turns into two lines. It is a right index. That's no, it's, it's, it's not, not double look. No, there's no double loop, so that's, that's not right. Right, the next one. Focus that a wee bit. Oh wait, that's got a double loop. And there's that bit. Double loop is there. And it's got that bit that um, it turns into two. Yep, is that's, that match? I think, yeah, I think it is the main. She's the means, the opportunity. That her Team, your incident board is looking brilliant. Gather around and tell me your thoughts so far. Come on then. Well. We found a few fingerprints on the jewellery box. Uh, the maids, Claire Henderson, uh, Heather Stewart and Fiona Ross. We don't know why Heather's would be on it, because it was Fiona's box in her room. Also, well, the maid did say that she moved the box, but that could be a cover-up if she knew her fingerprints were on it. She, the maid also has a, a means and an opportunity, but we don't know if she had a motive, or, so we need to find out a bit more about that. So, now's the time to think about who you're going to interrogate first. Well, it's kind of tied between Heather and Claire, um, because they're the think. most suspicious. We but think we should... I mean, Claire is short of money. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So she would have, yeah. Heather that, that could be a motive. Yeah. wants She's... the necklace. So Claire has the means, the opportunity and the motive. So be quick. So, so Claire, you think Claire. You think Claire. Claire. Yeah. You're going to interrogate Claire. Yep. Yeah. Let's bring her down. <laughs> I never knew this was down here. What's this supposed to be? First of all, I would like to know where you were when the necklace was stolen. Well, I don't know when the necklace was stolen, but... I um, know that... It was round about 11 o'clock. Uh, well, I'd finished being in the bedroom corridor long before that. I was away by 20 to 10. Can you so expand was... on that and tell me exactly where you were at 11 o'clock? Well, I'm a cleaner. I was cleaning, and then I went down to the staff room for my break. Why were your fingerprints on the box where the necklace was kept? I, I was dusting round it and I just must have moved it, that's all. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Eh, no, let me think about it. Yes, I'm sure. Are you sure you don't want to expand on that and tell the truth? This might be shocking information for you, but it's actually against hotel policy to go snooping in guest belongings. So, what was your financial status at the moment? Bit of a personal question. Eh... Not great. I'm a chambermaid, as you can see. Do you have a criminal record of any sort? I certainly do not. It's ridiculous. Are you aware that you were caught on CCTV giving Heather something, in which you returned ten minutes later? 
No, I wasn't aware of that. Is there anything you'd like to say about that? This is just between you and me. Just between you and me? OK. So I was hoovering, OK? And that horrible Mrs Stewart came up to me and she says that she's left her key in her bedroom. Uh, she says, can I have the master key? Now, we're not allowed to give guests the master key for obvious reasons. Well, we had a bit of an argument and I said it was against hotel policy and then she got a bit ratty with me. And it, mm. To be honest, I'd seen her key in the room when I was cleaning it earlier, so I knew that she'd left it, so she wasn't lying, so I, I gave her the key. Um, you've answered all my questions, but you might have to stay here for a bit longer. Well, that's fine. It's better than cleaning, isn't it? Looks like this place could do with a good dusting, Simon. Just sit tight. No worries. So, she's getting a motive. Here you are, Tim. Oh, right, thanks. What's that? It's the forensic. Right, bring it around here, then. There's a picture here as well. It's... Well, it's sure. What does it say? Yeah, say, it says, Traces found on the necklace case suggest that someone handled it wearing gloves. It is not possible to deduce if these marks are recent or old. OK, let's have a look. Thank you. That's of the necklace case. This is analysis of the mud mark on the bathroom floor. The mud mark is different in composition to the mud found on the hiking boots belonging to Fiona Ross. And there's this photograph. The examination of the area beneath the bathroom window of Fiona Ross. Some indentations, possibly from some kind of wheels, were found in the grass below the bathroom. Why would somebody want to take... Like wheels or like a vehicle a bike up or there. Or... But well, there's two someone... tracks, so it can be a bike. If you could update your timelines and your instant boards, it might help you. Yeah. So... If you think about it, you could mark out the route the taxi would have taken on this, cos... her window would be round about here. The taxi came down here, picked her up, then instead of going away, he came all the way up here to the back of the house. Now to explain the marks on the ground and the different mud in the thing. Fiona Ross's valuable necklace has gone missing from her room in the hotel. She has accused her aunt, Heather Stewart, of stealing it. Ian Johnston, double glazing salesman, is also staying at the hotel, but claims he was working from his room when the necklace went missing. Chambermaid Claire Henderson cleaned Fiona's bedroom this morning and was also caught on CCTV lending her master key to Heather Stewart. Whilst in the forensics lab, our investigators found fingerprints matching Fiona, Heather and Claire on the jewellery case. In interrogation, Claire admitted to having moved the jewellery case whilst dusting the tabletop. A photograph of tracks, possibly from wheels, has been found at the back of the hotel underneath Fiona's bathroom window. The team are making good use of all the tools at their disposal. They'll have to if they want to crack this case. Guys, uh, I think there's a fax coming through. Another piece of new evidence? Yes. Yeah, all right, come around. What's on it? It says it's from ZMT Insurance. Dear Miss Ross, following our telephone conversation yesterday, I'm happy to confirm that your necklace has been insured against loss, theft or accidental damage up to the value of £3,000. Well, it seems slightly strange that um, she's insured her necklace really quickly and it's just gone missing like that, um, so mm -hmm. close to when it was insured. So it does suggest that she's might, she might have insured it and knew that, she was, that it was going to disappear uh, and uh, get the benefits from that. So bearing all that in mind, it's now time to interrogate one more suspect. Who would you like to interrogate? We're going to go for Fiona. Why? We think she's claiming the benefits from the insurance company. Let's bring her down. <laughs> Take a seat, please. Can you tell me where you were um, this morning when the uh, necklace was stolen? Well, I don't know exactly when the necklace was stolen. Um, when I got back to my room, that was just after 11, I think. Um, it was gone. Gone back from where? From my walk. I went on a walk after breakfast. I, I went down to breakfast about 8 and um, I met Ian Johnson in the breakfast room. By accident or did you arrange? No, but 
just by accident. I, I actually met him uh, last night. We were talking in the lounge, and I'm afraid I've really bent his ear about um, things that have been going on lately. What things? Well, um, I'm here for my grand's funeral, and it's it's just a bit difficult. And there's me and my aunt Heather here. Heather has never been kind to me. I don't think she likes me. And now she comes back and demands this necklace because she says that she was promised it as a child. When she doesn't care, she didn't care a bit about my gran when she was alive. Describe your relationship with uh, Ian. Um, Ian's been really kind to me. I only met him last night and I told him all about um, things when I was a kid, my relationship with Heather. And when I went on a walk this morning, I went over to Loch Dew because I used to go there with my gran and he was just seemed really happy to listen. He was okay, really that's nice. the last question, thanks. Thanks. Is this really necessary? It is all part of the process. I'm so sorry. We won't keep you long. So it's clear that Fiona is convinced that her aunt stole the necklace, and we know that Heather had means, motive, and opportunity. But is it significant that Fiona has spoken so openly about the necklace to Ian Johnston, somebody who she only met last night? Look at this! Look at this! One of the kitchen staff has noticed that this wheelie bin wasn't in its usual place. What do you think of this? Right. It's as interesting as... It's good evidence because of the wheels. There is two the wheels. wheel lines. Aye. But why would someone need the really bit to get up? I don't know. The That's for you to work out. To or to get up in the window. Front. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the the map of the hotel, so the rear of the hotel. It's an ensuite bedroom of bathroom two. So and it's three point six meters up, he and that's too much to there and jump onto the wheelie bin. You need to get thinking about who the final suspect you're going to interrogate is. You got two left. I think we should interrogate um, Ian. Ian. Yeah. Yeah. Ian. Ian because he, everyone else has a known motive and he's the only one that doesn't. And we don't know much about him and we want to find out more. So this is the time. Ian it is. Let's bring him down. Wow. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Sit down, please. Certainly. When you met Fiona, what did you talk about? Well, uh, she's, she's having some difficulties. She, her, her grandmother just passed away and, um, we talked about that and uh, uh, problems with her aunt, I think, uh, and something to do with a will and a necklace. Well, you're a double glazing salesman. That's right, I am, uh, yeah. Do would you know how to get into windows? I suppose I know a bit about windows, yeah. <laughs> do you know what room Fiona was staying in? No, no idea, sorry. Do you know where the wheelie bins are kept? No, I'm, I'm a guest at the hotel, I have no idea. Keep at them, keep asking. Do you own a pair of gloves? Yes, I, I, I do, in the car. Did you bring them? Like, have you got them in the hotel with you? Uh, I can't remember if I left them in the car or, or in the hotel, but yeah, I've got a pair. What happened to your hand? I went to the toilet in the middle of the night last night and um, <clears throat> I didn't put the light on. And um, when I went for the flush, I missed the flush completely and I scraped my, my wrist against the, the lid of the toilet. Hey, thanks. Not at all. Thank you. Oh, you're having a laugh. I've got appointments to keep. It's all in the name of justice. Oh, give me a break. Team, this is the last chance you've got to look at all of your evidence, because in just a moment, I'm going to be asking who you think the suspect is. I would say that it was Ian. I really the crime. don't think he is. He doesn't have a motive, and then... I mean, he's just someone at the hotel. I mean... He, it, it, he seems like a, it, it seems like a... It seems like a well-planned... I know. Um, um, theft, and he didn't know anything about it until, like... How do you know, know he might be lying? But he didn't know anything about it until he met Fiona. Doesn't look like the sort of guy that would lie. No, he doesn't. I don't. Well, appearances can be deceptive. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think it's him. Yeah. Well, that still doesn't explain the wheelie bin, though. I don't think it's clear. I don't think it's Ian. I think it's either Fiona or Heather. But the wheelie bin's there. It's been dragged along and dragged back for no it, apparent it could reason. Not, it could if, if, it, somebody, if it was Heather, she would have gone in by the door and opened it, but she wouldn't have used the wheelie bin, I don't know why, because she has the master key. If it was Fiona, she would have used the key to enter her own room, but I don't, still don't see why she would have needed the wheelie bin. But Ian needed the wheelie bin. I want to say Ian. 
No. I want to see Ian. No. Ian. No. No. Heather. See. Heather. That. Ian. It's time to bring down the final suspect. It won't be forever. Hopefully, the case is almost closed. You've seen all the evidence. You've interrogated three of the four suspects. Who is your prime suspect? My prime suspect is Ian. Are you all agreed? Yeah. Why? Well, it seems a wee bit strange that um, he was the only one without a, a key to the to the room, um, to Fiona's room, uh, and there was a wheelie bin, so he could have climbed up, and his room was the optimum position for him to climb down and go along and climb up into Fiona's room. And if um, Fiona or, uh, the, uh, or Heather had gone in with the key, um, why was the wheelie bin there? And he heard all about it from Fiona the night before. Well, that's an interesting theory. Let's see if you're right. It was yes. Ian Johnston. Fiona made the mistake of telling Ian about her necklace last night. This morning at breakfast, she mentioned she was driving to Lock Do, so he was confident that he'd have the time to do the robbery. He probably waited for the maid to finish in their corridor, then climbed out of his window. But he misjudged the jump and hurt his hand. He dragged over a wheelie bin from the back of the kitchens and used it to help him to climb up the drain pipe. Once he got the necklace, he climbed back down from Fiona's window and used the wheelie bin to get back into his own room. He must have had mud on his trainers, so he changed. He put the necklace in a parcel addressed to his own post office box, which he gave to me for posting. He had to leave the wheelie bin underneath his window when he used it to climb back into his room, so when Fiona reported the theft, Ian went straight outside and moved the bin back to where he'd found it. You're all free to go. Mr Johnson, you stay right where you are. Teams, congratulations. You did it. You must be feeling elated. Yes. yes. Well, thank you very much indeed. Another three more entries into the academy, another crime solved. Who did you suspect?